Today on the Champ and the Chum podcast, we welcome trainer extraordinaire Jose Benavidez Sr. He is the trainer of the Mexican monster David Benavidez and Jose Benavidez Jr., star of Creed 3. Hey, what's up, buddy? How you doing? Hey, man, how you doing? Doing wonderful, man. Living the dream. Congrats. Big victory. Thank you, man. Super excited, super happy. That victory yeah. was a big satisfaction in our career, man. It's Man, I can't tell you how much this fight meant uh, uh, for me and my family. I can, you know, one thing weird about the fight. So I was a little shocked how a good amount of people who know boxing, right, were, were making it more of a 50-50, which I personally didn't see. You know what I mean? I thought David, I thought David is a, is a one in a million fighter in general, but specifically against Plant, I think he's a nightmare matchup. You know what I mean? Man, you know, I mean, uh, I always said it, you know, people said that I was crazy. That's why I talked a lot of shit, you know, and I knew I had to back it up. You know, I know what I have. I know what we've been doing. I've been studying Caleb plan for almost five years, mm-hmm. you know, um, you know, uh, every day, man. And we had a plan. We executed the plan right. And uh, we knew we would have to lose and give up and risk five, five, four rounds and then come strong. Mm-hmm. And the the time was perfect, you know, when, when David caught him to the body at, in the fourth round. In the fifth round, we came harder and harder and harder, and 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 that changed everything. You know, he had no yeah. legs. His legs disappeared. Yeah, yeah. Hey, guys, please subscribe and smash that like button. And if there's any fighters you want us to interview or anything else, any questions or comments, hit us up. We're here for you. Um. I heard David say something afterwards. I'm curious. What, I was going to ask him, but I don't think, I'm, you know, I think he's just taking some time off. But he said something like he made some things he needs to adjust and, and make some adjustments. And, like, do you know what exactly is he talking about that he thinks he maybe didn't do that well? Well, you know, in, in reality, me, I, I still watch the video. There's so many things that we had to do in order to to, perf- to perfect and get, get it right. Uh we made a lot of mistakes, you know, mm-hmm. and, but I'm super happy. Don't get me wrong. You know, you keep learning. He's only 26 years old. I think there's other things that we could have done to make it better. And we are back to the drawing board. Not just, I mean, we didn't lose, but a lot of people say that, you know, we got to go back to the drawing board and, and reset and, 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 and see what we did wrong. You, you're always going to have something, some things that are wrong, you know? So we're coming back and, uh, and, and adjust other things and, and 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 see but the plan was you know make him get uh, a little bit a panic a little bit make him think that you can throw big shots make them make him think you know that you're coming so he can move 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 and then touch him a little bit touch him a little bit so so he can panic right. you know and then in in the fourth fifth round that's when we're when we're gonna start working you know mm-hmm. and that was the plan you know if you see first david was throwing like wild punches he would you know he was there you know like giving him confidence that you know he got hit a little bit and and you know there from the outside you know and and just making him move 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 and that was the plan to make him move 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 so he can waste his energy without him knowing right and you know one thing that was was very impressive was david's uh, head movement and his defense because a lot of people haven't had to really see him do that but in this fight he was showing really good head movement and against a really slick boxer too exactly you know if you go back to my videos I said you guys are going to see a different David you know we he has a lot a lot of people talk about flat footed no defense and uh, and all that I told him no you know we had to have the need because we have fighters that are coming forward and we cut the ring and you know He's ready to go and throw a lot of punches, you know. Where Caleb Plant is going to be a little bit different. We're not going to be able to do that because he, you can't hit a target that's moving, you know. So we have to make sure he doesn't have any more legs, and then we can throw the combinations and throw more punches. You guys are going to see a lot of head movement. You guys are going to see how well he cuts the ring off and, and all those things. And people thought I was crazy. And people were saying that Caleb Plant was going to make him look like an amateur mm. uh, and and I never thought that, you know, I was not panicking in, 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 in the ring there. You know, I knew the plan was going to work. And I was so confident that David was going to adjust and make those adjustments. And we were so confident that we were going to catch him and make him make him pay for, for all that. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. That's, you know, kind of what I said earlier. I don't know how anybody would think that it was a 50-50 fight stylistically. But, you know, either way, how frustrated were you when... 
because I think this fight would have probably, I think he would have been stopped, right? But but the referee allowed unbelievable amount of holding. How frustrated that made Yeah, that, that was the only frustration I had, you know, holding. You know, when he was about to attack, the, the, you know, he will hold and the, the, the referee, you know, wouldn't say anything. And I told him, ref, he's holding. You know, he's putting his hand out. You can't do that. That's illegal, you know. But, you know, at the end of the day, we can see somebody had to pay somebody or ha or something happened in there that he was protecting Caleb Plant. It was so obvious, you know. I didn't. It's not just me. Everybody knows what happened in there. And, you know, he comes and hits him blow a couple of times, you know, and, and he doesn't say anything, you know. He comes and says things to me about David, you know, like, what the, you know, I, I don't understand. And David had him hurt a couple of times and he let him recuperate, you know. And at the end of the day, I think he wanted to save him. He wanted to help him. And he made a mistake because he ended up in the hospital. You know, at one point, I forget which round it was, the referee warns David for holding. And I thought I was watching MTV Punk. I'm like, you got to be fucking kidding me. He warned, you yeah. remember that? He actually says something to David, like, don't hold. And I'm like, what? Exactly. That, 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 that's why I, I, that's the frustration because, like, we don't hold nobody, bro. No. We, we're a clean, David's a really clean fighter, man. He could have gone back and hit him in the balls again, too, like he did. But he didn't do none of that, you know. He was staying clean, very composed, and, 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 and you know, he was there to fight. He, and, yeah, you know, I mean, it's so upsetting that you have somebody like that, you know, in a big fight like that, you know. Yeah. I think they tried to help him as much as they could, but they couldn't do anything for him. No, and, and the one thing, like, the one thing that I found that, that seemed kind of pretty intentional, I'm sure you'll agree, is, is I think right after the first round that David visibly hurt him, he comes out and hits him low on purpose, really low. Yeah. Um, like, and, you, you, know, and, you know, I've been around boxing, so have you. That was pretty intentional. And really, really low, man. Yeah. There were some other shots, too, that were really low. He would just take Caleb, Kayla, keep him up. You know, like, what the? That's, like, really low, bro. Uh, but at the end of the day, you know, I'm happy. David got the victory. And, I mean, to me, I'm super satisfied, super proud of what he did, the adjustments he made. And at the end of the day, you know, uh, we didn't get the knockout, but he did go to the hospital. Uh, but at the end of the day, man, you know, I don't want to talk bad about Caleb Plant. You know, he's a great fighter, a warrior. My respects, you know. And, 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 you know, I like Caleb, man, you know. And uh, I just wish he's okay. He's going to come back. He's a fucking true, true warrior, man. Yeah. He's going to come back, and there's no doubt he's going to be a world champion, you know. He's very dedicated, very disciplined. He does have a lot of fucking skills, man. He's yeah. really good, yeah. you know. Uh, um, I, my only advice to him, I would say, you know, he's very fast. I think he should just kind of combine that with the with a little bit of power sit on her, on his punches a little bit once in a while right that's the only thing i will say you know but from there on he has he's he has everything bro yeah. he has everything to come back and no no shame you know uh 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 he did very well man you know he did really good yeah he uh you know and, i agree I, I think he did show a lot of heart because even when he was you know when his gas tank was almost empty he was trying he was trying to put combinations he was taking some hard shots from David, you know, the ones that were able to land clean when he wasn't holding. So it was impressive. You know, he, he was more of a warrior, I think, than a lot of people thought, right? Yeah, my, my respect. That's why he got my respect. But that motherfucker would not go out without his shield, you know? I think the corner wanted to stop it. Uh, and I think they should have stopped it because he did, at the end of the day, he did receive a lot of punishment yeah. that he shouldn't take, you know, in order to, to, to uh, be a little bit more fresh and... And, and have more fights in, in, in the future, you know? Yeah, yeah, no, absolutely. You know, it's, it's, a, it's, a good, it's a good few months for you. You know, you have this victory. Your son just started in, in Creed three, right, your other son? So Yeah, super excited about that. That movie is number one around the world. And Dave Jr. has a very good, uh, a lot. He was, came out a lot, so super proud of him, too. Yeah, how did, you know, quickly, how did that come about? How did he get that role? Well, you know, uh, we know a lot of people, and uh, they, they were asked, uh, looking for people, and, and that's how he got it. I mean, it, 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 it's just funny how everything happened, you know, in life. But the opportunity was there, and they would give it to him, and, and he took advantage of it. Yeah, man, and he did a good job. He did a good job, too. Um, you know, that, 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 that's dope. Um, so I guess, you know, the question you're probably getting a lot, obviously, um, who is Canelo the only person? You guys, you guys really want next? No, no. You know, we have a contract already uh, of three fights. And that three fights is uh, Bubu Andrade, uh, David Morrell, and Charlo. Uh, those are the guys oh. that 
I mean, we're supposed to fight, but uh, at the end of the day, we're open to whatever happens. You know, uh, this fight was a mandatory fight for Canelo Alvarez. We know that Canelo Alvarez is fighting uh, John Ryder, no problem. He's going to beat him, no, no, no problems. Uh, after that, he has to fight David. And if he doesn't fight David, I think he's going to get stripped out of his belt. And uh, if he doesn't fight David, and and uh, uh, what's his name, uh, Eddie Hearns is saying that he's going to fight the rematch with B-Ball. And he says that uh, uh, Canelo beat Caleb Plant in a fashion way. He, uh, he says that he did better than uh, than uh, than David did. I mean, David sent him to the hospital, bro. How, how much more do you want? It was an exciting fight. Yeah. Canelo just hit him with one yeah. shot, and they stopped the fight. I agree. You know, so uh, if you look at the I, – I just posted on my Instagram, you know, we have the numbers. How many punches David landed? How many punches did Canelo yeah. land? So you can see it there, you know, and, and, and you'll see on your own way. He says that uh, B-Ball is an easier fight. Uh, he says that David's an easier fight than B-Ball. Well, if he's an easier fight, why don't you take David first, make all that money that you're not going to make with B-Ball, and then fight B-Ball, you yeah, know? Yeah, I, I agree. So, you know, that, that wasn't yeah. The, that wasn't a close fight. Yeah. Uh, you know. I don't know, you know. I don't know if he was drunk or <laughs> or, or I don't know, you know. I don't so, know how he can how he can say those things, you know. I mean, at the end of the day, David's a bigger fight than B-Ball. He'll, right. That would be his biggest fight in his entire career at this point right now. Yeah, well, so Canelo mentions the whole, like, not fighting a Mexican thing. Do you think that would apply since David is half Ecuadorian, right? You know, I'll tell you one thing. We'll fucking fight Ecuadorians, <laughs> Mexicans, black, uh, white, uh, Puerto Ricans. You know, when you're a champion and you want to be a champion, you're going to have to fight whoever deserves the opportunity. I think David proved that he, he belongs there. Everybody wants to see Mike Tyson, Barrera, Chavez, Floyd. Everybody wants to see the fight. All the greatest, you know, want to see this fight. So when the greatest want to see this fight, it's going to make a good, good fight. Hope, and that's why I think it will be the biggest fight of this era right now. Huge. But well, do you think, do you, do you, so if you had to bet right now, do you think Canelo would, would take the fight? I don't think he's going to take the fight. If I had Canelo, I would say, fuck no. Stay away from David. <laughs> Uh, uh, let let them strip you. Let them get all those belts away. You know, don't fucking fight David. I agree. But at the end of the day, he's going to have a chip, chip over, all the, over his shoulders, and he's not going to be able to sleep because everybody's going to tell him, hey, David Benavides, the Mexican monster. David Benavides, the Mexican monster. I don't know if I would take that if I thought I was the true pound for pound, the best at 168. Yeah, I don't think he'll take it either. Um so how much long? So David is going to do these three fights, and do you see him staying at 68, or you think he'll jump into life? Well, we have a lot of options now. You know, like I said, you know, the contracts for three fights. Uh, if they offer me right now, the the real fight that I really want to get would be would be be bold to have that revenge against uh, Canelo and Sudo Ramirez. This will be the third Mexican, you know, that Bebo will fight. So that will be another huge fight, you know, for David. Be bold against uh, David Benavides, the Mexican monster. And we'll, we'll have the revenge against these two guys. Uh, how many fighters do you train total? Uh, right now, I, I, I have the Mexican monster, Jose Benavides Jr., Diego Pacheco, El Rayo Valenzuela, uh, Federico Pacheco, the brother of Diego Pacheco, and Daniel Blancas right now, that, that the ones that are coming up right now. Okay, and you, you know you have a long history in training. You worked with Freddie Roach, right? I was uh, Freddie's assistant for almost four years. I went with uh, the Diaz brothers in Coachella for like another two years, and then I went with Robert like for another two years, and I end up with Abel Sanchez and Big Bear for like another three years. So I learned nothing from the best. My respects, and hey, I'm representing the people that my mentors and the people that I follow, and uh, and I'm I'm you know some days I'm I I, I kind of took a little bit of everybody in my mind i think sometimes i turn into abel sanchez sometimes i turn a little bit into freddie roach and you know the way that they were m moving their fighters you know so i learned a lot from from these people some of the best and um uh and i'm thankful and thanks to them i'm where i'm at right now yeah i mean what what was your background quickly like were you a fighter i didn't know well? nothing about boxing i didn't know nothing about boxing uh, my mom and my dad separated when I was two years old. They left me in Mexico. I used to eat dirt. I was so poor, man. Leaves in order to go to sleep so my stomach would not growl. So I came to the United States when I was 11 years old. David was born when I was like about 15, 16, junior, I think. Uh, I'm sorry, junior. When I was 15, 16, 
how to work, how to hustle, how to do what I had to do in order to provide food for him and, 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 and a roof. And until I was like 26, when David was like 20, I mean, David was like about six years old, that's when I discovered boxing. I fell in love with boxing. I, I felt passionate about it. And I'm still super motivated to keep learning. Did you ever have any fights yourself? Never. I didn't know nothing. I never lace up no gloves. I never, but like I say, you know, I dedicated myself and, and looking a lot of film and, and watching. And I'm, I'm so dedicated to, to boxing that every day I'm learning something. And I'm, I, I keep learning every day. Wow. Okay. Yeah, but I did not like, know zero. I didn't know nothing about boxing. You know, there's a couple train. There's one other you and I think Joe Goosen are the two guys who are who are you know world championship level trainers who have never fought before. So it happens. Well, I, you know, I think when you're born, you don't know nothing, but when you start looking for for ways to learn and when you're passionate about something, uh, things come. It's not easy. It's not easy. Uh, but I think you little by little you keep learning. And at the end of the day, hard work will take you to another level. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, you know, you, you, you're doing a great job. It's every, there's a lot of excitement going on. Um, you know, I appreciate you talking with me. I know you got to jump off, but uh, thanks for taking the time. And let's talk again after uh, David gets yeah, the next definitely. victory. I will let you know as soon as, like, in about two weeks. Uh, I just want to let him rest. He had a, a hell of a camp. And, um, I don't want to bother him, and like in two weeks, uh, we'll get back, and uh, you hear from David, and and thank you so much for for everybody's support. Thank you guys, and uh, and um, we'll be here working hard. We'll give you uh, good fights. Let me ask you quick before you go, uh, Tank or Ryan? It's a good fight, man. These are the fights that we want to see too, man. Um, uh, I could only say that Tank has been active. Uh, Ryan, hell of a fighter. Uh, it's gonna be a tough. fight. Right, man. If I knew who was going to win, I would bet money. But you I'm not know. betting because because I don't know. If, but whoever wins, I'm going to be really happy, and they deserved it. They deserve that win. It's a good fight, man. And we want to see more of these fights. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, okay. Yeah, fair fair answer, fair answer. All right, man. Thanks for talking with me. Thank you. All right. Peace out. Peace out.